Recycling time. Let's melt some plastic. So we've been working with recycled plastic for a little while now, and we feel like we've learned quite a lot along the way. So we thought we'd put this video together to share some of our tips and tricks with you guys, in case you want to have a go yourself. So it's not all types of plastic you can use for this technique we're going to show you today. The thing you want to be looking out for is HDPE. What's that stand for? HDPE stands for High Density Polyethylene, and it's a really common available plastic. It's used for loads of stuff around the house, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. The reason we're using it for our projects is that it melts at a low temperature, which means it doesn't give off any toxic fumes, and it's really easy to work with. Where can I find it? From what we've found, all milk bottles are made out of HDPE, and that's both the bodies and the lids. And that's really good, because that means you can get it in a whole variety of colours. Also, things like condiments, cleaning products, and shampoos are often kept in HDPE bottles. You might even find some HDPE lying around your workshop. Generally, you want to avoid any type of plastic which is completely transparent. You also want to avoid any plastic which is really glossy. To ensure that you're never mixing different types of plastics together, always check that the plastic you're using has the HDPE logo somewhere on it. The logo you're looking for is the recycling triangle with a number two in the middle. Once it's been cast into a solid block, it works really well for things like workshop mallets or even something to tenderize your meat. Oh, you can. <laughs> tenderize your meat. It's a really dense material, so it works great for things like workshop carving mallets or even meat tenderizers. We've also made things like phone stands and coasters, as well as used it to customise our maker knife. It also turns really nicely, so we've used it to make some of these recycled plastic pens. What we're hoping to do with this video is give you the ultimate guide in how to work with HDPE, and at the end we're going to show you how to make one of these pens. So when collecting your plastic, you want to make sure the label has been completely removed, as these can potentially burn in the press. Also, you want to make sure your plastic is washed and dried. This will help prevent any bad smells building up in your workshop, as well as help ensure a good bond when it comes to pressing. So the one thing you need to be completely aware of during this whole process is that your worst enemy is going to be air bubbles. Air bubbles in your final piece are going to be spots for potential weakness, and if you're turning something as slender as a pen, it could be something that completely fails your entire project. Therefore, when processing your plastic, you've got two options to choose from. You could cut your pieces into longer strips, and that's going to give you that awesome marbling effect, or you could cut them into smaller pieces and that's going to prevent any air bubbles from building up. There are ways to get rid of air bubbles if you choose to go with those longer strips, such as twisting and folding the plastic, but we'll come on to that later. If you're just collecting lids, however, make sure they go top down on the press so that you don't trap any air underneath. As we mentioned earlier, HDPE melts at a really low temperature, so there's a number of ways that you can melt this at home. In the past, we've used a small toaster oven set to 150 degrees Celsius, or 300 degrees Fahrenheit for our American friends. We've even seen some people do it with a tin can and a heat gun. But our favourite way is using something like a panini press or a sandwich toaster, as this applies direct heat both top and bottom, and therefore melts it really, really fast. Another benefit is that they never seem to peak above the optimum temperature for melting plastic. At least not the ones we've tried. As well as the panini press, there's a couple of other things you're going to need. A good quality roll of greaseproof paper is going to help stop the plastic sticking to the press. Some mold release spray will help stop the plastic sticking to the paper. And a good pair of gloves will help stop the plastic sticking to your hands. With the gloves specifically, there's two things you want to be looking out for. The first is obviously heat protection, but the second is some kind of non-porous surface so the plastic doesn't stick. Try and go for a plastic or a synthetic glove over a fabric one. You'll notice later that we tried about three different types before we found the right pair. So the last bit of equipment we find is really helpful for us, but isn't essential as a set of weighing scales. Once you've made your first blank, you can go back and weigh this, and this will give you the exact weight of the plastic you used. So for every future mould, you can use the exact right amount of plastic, and this massively cuts down on waste. So in order to make our pen, we first need to make ourselves a pen blank. In order to do that, we've made ourselves a melamine mould just out of some scrap we had lying around. We're going to heat the plastic in our press, pop it in the mould, clamp it tight, and wait for it to cool down. Once you're happy that the plastic in the press has formed a single mass and it's bonded together really nicely, you can pop on your gloves and you can roll it off the greaseproof paper. You're probably going to want to repeat this process of twisting and folding the plastic before putting it back on the heat two, three, maybe four times.
So these blanks really don't take that long to cool. They're probably hard within about 10 minutes, but do hold their heat for quite a while. So if you're impatient like us, just throw them in some water for two to three minutes and they're good to go. Then it's just a case of trimming down the excess. We tend to use the bandsaw for this, but you really can use anything. To turn our newly formed blank of recycled plastic into a lovely pen, we use cheap pen kits that we buy online. These can be as cheap as just a couple of pounds, but I would recommend getting a few just so you can practice with some. One of the main issues we've had to overcome when making these HDPE pens is that traditionally you'd use epoxy to glue the tubes into the blanks before turning. What we found is that there's no real glue that you can use to bond HDPE to anything. So what we've had to do is drill a slightly undersized hole and use a compression fit to force the tube into the blank. So you can buy a specific press to help push these parts of the pen together. However, we're not professional pen makers, we've only just started doing this. So we find if you just chuck up a dome-headed bolt in your drill press, this works perfectly. Albeit, it can be a little bit fiddly. As Johnny said, we're not professional pen turners, which means we don't have a pen turning mandrel either. All we use is a piece of steel rod with some brass tubing to act as bushings, and this has worked great for all the pens that we've turned so far. So this material turns really nicely on the lathe. You can use traditional wood turning chisels or ones with carbide tips. Both give it a great finish. As is always the nature of turning, there is a lot of waste, but the great thing with this is that you can collect all of that up and then remelt it and make it into another blank. So do you remember earlier when I said that air bubbles are going to be your worst enemy? Obviously we left one in there just to make this a really thorough demonstration. We had a little chip out at the end of one of our cuts, but this is super easy to fix with a heat gun and a putty knife. Just make sure you're applying heat to both sides before you put them together. So the heat gun fix worked really well, but unfortunately we must have had an air bubble right next to the tube, which then caused this one to fail. So that's just the way it goes when using this material, but not to worry, you can cut the plastic off, get that remelted for your next blank, and then reuse the tubes for your next pen. So instead of drowning in our sorrows, we fired the press back up and we whipped up another blank and got that mounted on the lathe. This one turned out much better and we got to a shape that we were happy with really quickly. To start the finishing process, we use some files as well as some sandpaper working up through the grits to get a much smoother surface texture. To get a super smooth finish, we use a product called MicroMesh, which is a series of wet sanding pads ranging from 1500 to 12,000 grit. We finished up on the lathe with some burnishing cream just to give it a really nice high polish. So the last thing you need to do is assemble. We use the same technique on the pillar drill as we did earlier and then just follow the instructions that come with the pen kit. These are super easy to do and take no time.
But there you go, that's our guide to working with HTPE and hopefully there's enough there to get you started. And likewise, if you've got any tips and tricks yourself that we've missed out, just let us know in the comments below as we'd love to learn more. We'll be sure to pop links in the description below of all the equipment that we used in this video. If this video has inspired you to start your own HTPE creation, we'd absolutely love to see what you do. Tag us on Instagram or send us a message with what you've done. A massive thank you to our patrons that support us and help us keep these videos coming. If you want to join the Brotherhood, check the link in the description below and we'd love you forever. We're even going to give away one of our HTPE pens that we've made to one of our patrons. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning, head on over and join the Brotherhood. Thanks for watching. Cheers.